So when you see a vehicle like this, the Sequoia TRD Sport, there's not a lot of people that can justify spending nearly 60 grand on a vehicle like this. It's really old school feeling. It doesn't have the most updated tech, but this thing is truly a tank. If you want something that is going to last you forever and it's gonna feel like an absolute beast doing it, this is definitely a vehicle you guys should consider. And in this video, I'm gonna show you every detail about this car. We're gonna look at the exterior, the interior. I'm gonna take it for a drive and we're gonna do some light off-roading to see what this is really capable of. Let's get started. All right, so let's get to the obvious first. Now, like I said, this is a $60,000 vehicle. Uh, to be exact, at $60,782 as tested for this 2019 Toyota Sequoia TRD Sport. And this color is called Magnetic Gray Metallic. I love a good, just nice metallic gray. This has a ton of flake in it, and you can really see it in good daylight and especially in a setting like this where you have all this kind of dynamic range going on with the shadows and the lights hitting it really makes this color fit for this vehicle especially with all the black accents included in the trd sport now the trd sport isn't going to be a mega off-road version of the sequoia that is what the future trd pro is going to be for this is kind of an in-between it like gives you a little bit more road manners and a decent amount of quote unquote off-road capabilities. As you guys will see a little bit later, I'm gonna do as much as I can with that. Uh, but starting here at the front, I love the updates that they made to the front end of the Sequoia. Uh, love how they brought it a little bit more into the year 2019, especially with the full LEDs. I actually like these better than the LEDs you get like on the Tundra, for example, even though this is built off the same platform, usually has about the same front end. I just like this front end a little bit better. It has full LED lights, so at night it's very crisp looks really nice and you can see the road ahead of you very very well especially out here where I live in Fort Worth Texas now if we get a little bit closer uh, especially down here at the bottom you're going to see this plate here now I do apologize I have the car running right now because it's like 98 degrees and super humid uh, but yeah you have a kick plate here and it's going to be legitimate metal so I'm gonna knock on it and you guys should be able to hear it so hopefully there's not too much radiator noise going on So yeah, you guys can see that is a pretty solid piece. I mean, it's a Toyota, so it's going to have legitimate parts on it. So as far as the front end, very functional. Of course, you have tons of area for air to go in to feed that radiator to make sure that big 5.7 liter V8 is nice and cool. And I actually love the hood lines on here. Of course, they're very reminiscent of the uh, Tundra, but man, do they really look good. I, I love this section right here. So you can see this really faint line that's gonna go right here. And it's just gonna flow all the way down the side of the car. Hopefully you guys can see that. And then once you come to the wheels, you have um, definitely more on-road tires here, if you guys can see that. I'll try to brighten it up here for you guys. Uh, but these are gonna, going to be Dueler Bridgestone tires. And yeah, you guys can see the tread on them. They're definitely going to be more street-oriented tires. And they're gonna be, gonna be 275, 55s, all the way around, so a full square setup. And you've got this nice black wheel design right here. You have your TRD Sport badge here on the side. As you come down, you have just traditional, old school styling here with the TRD Sport. Not much has changed right there in the styling department. Then as you come towards the back quarter panel, which is always one of my favorite angles, it isn't really different back here. I wish they would have done a similar update like they did to the front and the back, because I just don't feel like they did anything with the back. It still looks great, don't get me wrong. It has a slightly smoked out look with the headlights, but for the most part, it's very, very traditional Toyota Sequoia. Uh, this one is going to have some crossbars there to put like a roof rack, and you have your third brake light right there up top. Of course, your lights back here are actually not going to be LEDs, so you guys can see those at night. They look very, very basic, and they don't have that same presence as the front does. And as you come down, you have your spare tire right underneath the bottom of the vehicle right there. Exhaust over here to the right, and you have a area there for a trailer as well. All right, so here's your key for the Sequoia TRD Sport. It's super basic. Lock, unlock, panic button, that's it, and then your Toyota symbol on the back. And as you guys can see, it's not even a fob, it's just an old school traditional key. Now, most people will love this, 
especially if you're used to things being very mechanical and just you really like the aspect of not having a lot of electronics this will be great so when you walk up to the door that means you're not going to have any buttons on the door you're not going to have any touch sensitive areas you just unlock it like this or you can use the key slot right here very traditional all right so once you open the door to the sequoia trd sport first thing you're going to notice is there's not a lot of detail going on here you just have a big black door um, and at the top you are going to have hard plastic right here down here you are going to have some soft stir plastic but it still has like a very very firm feel to it it doesn't give at all a uh, little area here to use to close the door or you can put change in there whatever you choose to do and then you have your window controls here have your door locks window locks you have a little area here where you can put like you know I just have like receipts and just kind of random trash items like that held inside of there so hopefully you guys can see that and you have that on each door and then as you come down you have a decent amount of storage space and then two bottle holder areas there you have this nice faux carbon fiber TRD sport kick plate there and it may even be real carbon it looks very very convincing either way love the way it looks it doesn't illuminate or anything so you can only see it during the day Sequoia TRD Sport floor mats as you come down to the side you're going to of course have your basic seating functions right here as far as like lumbar support moving the seat forwards and backwards controlling the backrest of the seat and the leather quality is pretty decent it's got a good amount of give as you guys can see there you have some contrast stitching right there on the seat don't have any perforations or anything going through the middle and it's a pretty simple and quite frankly basic seat design as you move up the seat but let's go ahead and hop in and we'll check out the rest all right so shutting the door on the sequoia trd sport decent door shut you do hear a few things rattling there but it is a massive door so i will get Quick look around the inside before I start it. And here is your key. Once again, very traditional. So what that means, you're going to have an illuminated piece right back here. Hopefully you guys can see that. So right there, and you just stick the key in there. And that is how you start the vehicle. All right, starting at the steering wheel, you've got a very large old school design right here. Um, you have smooth leather going all around the wheel and at the bottom you are going to have the controls on the left and the right side. So for example, on the right side, you're going to have all of your cruise control settings. So this does have adaptive cruise, which I'm actually surprised that it has. So you can see that there. This is going to control your menus and this is going to help guide you through those menus. And then your cruise control is the old school stock right back here. So you're gonna push up to cancel. Um, sorry, I'm gonna push towards you to cancel, press up to resume the uh, cruise control you previously had set, and then you can go up and down to adjust the speed, and then you just click this and push down to turn it on, very simple. Then as you come over to the left, you have all of your Bluetooth commands. So you have your phone commands, different modes, AM, FM, XM. Uh, actually, I don't, this does have XM, I'll take that back. Uh, and then you have your voice commands, volume, previous next right there and your Toyota badge right there in the middle. So very basic, you don't have any like unique stitching or anything coming off to the sides, but it is a very big wheel. So you guys can see here, I have a pretty good grip on it. It fits really, really well in the palm of my hand. So very nice, very sturdy. Uh, you do not have automatic wipers. So you just have normal interval wipers. So you do have to adjust them yourselves and your rear wiper is gonna be here on the outside. Over to the left, you actually have automatic lights and then your fog lights are going to be this little knob right there. Coming over here, you have automatic high beams and you just turn them on by pushing that button there. Mirror controls, you're going to have this lighting so that way when you open the door, the lights will turn on. You can adjust that, turn it on or off. Uh, vent here, and then as you come up to the top, you are going to have a speaker right back there. Hopefully you guys can see that. This is gonna be hard touch plastic. And as you come over here, hard touch plastic. You do have a speaker right there. And the upsetting part is you don't even get a JBL sound system. I actually thought 
This would include a JBL, which Toyota is very well known for, and this does not have that, so I was very disappointed to see that. Uh, an extremely small screen. I mean, to give you guys a little bit of perspective here, I am behind on the iPhone game, and I have this iPhone SE, which is basically an old 5 iPhone with the updated chip inside. But anyways, it's about as big as my tiny iPhone. So that gives you guys a good perspective of how tiny that screen is and in dire need of a bigger updated system for sure. But as you get a little bit closer, it works pretty well. You don't have Apple CarPlay, obviously, but you are going to have the, um, I guess, gray snow is what they call it but you plug in your USB, plug it into your phone, and you can play music straight off your phone. So at least you have that, and it's got all of your basic commands right there. As you come down, you have dual zone climate control, so you can adjust that for each side right there. All your different zones, things like that. Fan speed is gonna be right here, and then you have your drive mode selector to put you in two wheel drive, twist it over for four high, and you're gonna push in and then twist to put it into four low. So you do have that. And then you have heated seats right down here next to the USB on each side. You don't have cooled seats, so they are just going to be heated. You have your tow and haul mode right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let me try to brighten things up a little bit. There we go. Tow haul mode, you're going to have your middle locking diff. And I'll go over this stuff again, hopefully if you didn't see it before because it was too dark. And then over here, you are going to have a little bit more control. So this control is going to be for your back window. So if I look right back here, hopefully you guys can see that window back there. And I'm gonna roll that down. There we go. So I love that feature, one of my favorite features about this vehicle. And then right next to that, you are going to have your tracks control right there and your parking sensors right there. And you've got this big, massive, like Thor's hammer shifter. It's huge, it says TRD stamped right at the top. Very old school feel, sport mode, you can shift yourself. It does have to be in neutral if you plan on putting it into four low. Hopefully you guys know that. And then park, and if you throw it in reverse, you actually do have a backup camera, which is very tiny, of course, and not the best resolution by any means. Two massive cup holders uh, this area here which looks like an area just to lay your keys on you lift it up and it's actually a very deep storage pocket right there so i thought that was pretty interesting you have another i guess cup holder bottle holder right there and then right below here you are going to actually have this area which is just a little extra area for storage space now coming to the armrest, you've got this massive, massive armrest. You can fit like three people's arms right there. You lift this up, very truck-like. You have a ton of storage space within here. So you guys can see just how deep that is. Then as you come over here, you have two glove boxes right here. You have one down here. And then one up top with a little bit of extra storage space right in there. As you come up, you do have an auto dimming mirror right here with all of your home link located right underneath there. Area for sunglasses right there. Hopefully you guys can see that. There we go. And then you have all of your tilt features for your sunroof and then you're gonna click that to open it up. Just like that, very simple. And then if you do have vanity mirrors, um, if you guys didn't know, the lights here are not LEDs, or just your normal lights right there. Vanity mirror, which actually does not have a light, so you guys can see there's no light anywhere right there. That's pretty much gonna be it for the interior. Let's go ahead and check out the back seat. All right, guys, so sitting in the back seat of the Sequoia TRD Sport, this is really where this vehicle is going to shine in terms of practicality and just overall room. It's a big vehicle. So sitting behind my passenger seat, um, I'm six feet tall, so I do have this set to where I would sit comfortably. I literally have like six inches of knee room. It's insane. Uh, probably some of the, probably the biggest amount of knee room I've had in almost any vehicle. And then my feet can slide underneath here very, very easily so I can stretch out, get comfortable. Uh, and the seats do go back and forth, as you guys can see there. So you have this manual adjustment here. I do have a little armrest right there so I can rest my arm on here. It is adjustable so I can put it real high like this or I can put it 
a little bit lower. So um, I do like how it locks into place like that. It can, of course, recline the rear seat at a very aggressive angle. So if I wanted to take a nap, I could easily recline very far back. Uh, not an issue right there. I have vents here for that shoot right on my head, so it feels great. Uh, you do have cup holders down here. So I fold that down, you have cup holders here. So I can put you know, a Chick-fil-A drink and it fits just fine. There's no issues there. You have uh, an area here to adjust all of your AC controls, adjust your temperature, a 12 volt. You don't have any USB ports back here, unfortunately. Uh, and then you do have map pockets behind each seat. And this one has an additional option, which is like, you can lock this onto here to put your iPad and things like that. It doesn't come standard with the vehicle, so once again, you do have to get that as an option. Uh, you also don't have LED lights, just your basic lights right up here. You do have a handle here to grab onto if your mom or dad decides to take you off-roading in the back of this vehicle. And that's pretty much it. And you have a nice pass-through here because this does have the bucket seat set up so you can get to the third row very easily, which we will check out right now. All right, so getting to the third row, very easy. If you're small enough, you can easily pass through the middle. Not an issue, but if you're six feet tall like I am, all you have to do is pull this up and then scoot it forward just like that. Very simple. After that, you hop in the back. And so I'm gonna scoot this back for you guys. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna scoot over here. So this seat is set where I was sitting just a minute ago. And I have, man, maybe two and a half inches of knee room back here. So very, very good. And uh, the seat is basically at its most reclined position, I think. Let me see if I can adjust this here. So I can adjust it, and that's as far back as it goes. So you can go forward like that, or you can go back. Um, oh, it does go a little bit further. Okay, there we go. So it's a separate button. So if you guys can see these buttons here, hopefully you can. So I was using these buttons before. This is the button I used afterwards, and that's the button you're gonna use to recline backwards. And at that point, I'm very, very comfortable. Um, I have I have maybe an inch and a half uh, above my hair. So once again, that's fantastic for a third row. I have two cup holders over here. There's two cup holders over there. There's even a little bit of storage space in here, which is great. Um, and you have this big cubby area. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'll give you a closer B-roll look right here. But it is very nice. And then you actually have a grab handle here as well. So once again, if mom and dad wanna take you off-roading, you're not hitting your head on anything back here. So you can hold on to something. This is the only vehicle I think I've seen that has these in the third row. Lights back here, you do have vents that are shooting on your head so you get the air immediately. And it's just a really nice, big third row. So let's go ahead and check out the trunk space. Actually, you guys, before we hop into the third row, there's one thing I forgot to mention. There's a little, area here and to get out if you're in the third row you just kick it and push forward very very cool all right it's so coming to the back of the sequoia trd sport one of my favorite features is this you get the key you stick it in the slot right here and then after it's in you hold it to the left that's going to roll down your window uh, so this is the other way you can do it other than rolling it down from the inside like i showed you guys earlier then of course you just reach in grab whatever you need pull it out hold it to the right and that will roll it back up that is not something a lot of other car companies do. I think Toyota may be the only one who still does that, and of course Lexus with like the LX570. Uh, but once the vehicle is unlocked, it is a traditional hydraulic strut-powered lift gate. It's not automatic or anything like that, so you don't have a lot of electronics to break. You even have a strap here to pull it down with. But once you're back here, it's a good amount of space behind the third row when it's up. I can actually fit a good amount of suitcases and luggage back here, so you guys can see that there. Then once you lift up the floor, you have an actually pretty deep amount of storage space down here. So it's very, very practical. And then of course you have your buttons over here to the left to fold the seats down. They are electronic. That is something I do wish they would have actually kept just manual because it takes so long to fold them down. So here is me folding the seats down. You have to hold it. And there we go. So that's how long it took. But once the seats are down, uh, you guys can see a ton of room back here. And then of course you can fold down the second row, which will give you an even more amount of space. And at that point, you can fit like five lawnmowers back here. It's pretty insane how much space you have. Uh, and that's the best thing about the Sequoia is just how big and practical it is. But that's pretty much it for the trunk space. Let's go ahead and see what's under the hood. All right, so coming under the engine of the Toyota Sequoia, one cool thing I like is when you lift open the hood, it's actually not just this hood part, it's literally like the entire front 
grill of the vehicle. So this whole thing comes up absolutely massive and sitting underneath this hood is the tried and true 5.7 liter Toyota V8. This engine is used in so many vehicles and so that makes sense why someone would want something like this. This engine is absolutely bulletproof and you know it's gonna last you close to 500,000 miles without any issues. And that's really the biggest selling point for this vehicle to be honest. You know, a lot of people hate on Toyota for selling their cars based off of one factor, which is reliability. But something like this, especially when you're hauling around a lot of family and you just need something that's safe and reliable, this is just a good way to go, it really is. So this engine is gonna make 381 horsepower, 401 pound-feet of torque in this application. And it is going through a six-speed automatic and a old-school traditional four-wheel drive system. So that means you can put it into four high, four low, and two-wheel drive is going to be the standard drive mode whenever you're just cruising around town. Uh, and the fuel economy is not very good. You're talking uh, best of 17 miles per gallon on the highway. You guys can see the exact fuel economy figures here. And this is about a 26 gallon fuel tank. So this is definitely not a gas saver by any means. So you are gonna spend a ton of money on fuel and I'm gonna show you guys exactly what it uses in fuel in just a moment. But that's pretty much it for under the hood. You guys can see this massive radiator here. So as soon as you start the vehicle, it's got that old school, traditional loud fan startup. And that's really what's gonna help keep this giant engine cool. So let's go ahead and get this thing on the road and see how it does. All right, so driving the Sequoia TRD Sport. Now, there are some very good things I wanna say about this vehicle just right off the bat. So I'm gonna start with the positives. And those positives are going to be the fact that for this big of a vehicle, it's actually decently capable. I took it through a pretty deep puddle that had formed in a back road near my house. Um, it was a lot deeper than it looks, but this thing went through it, no issues, and that was with stock street tires. Um, so that was very impressive. I took it on a pretty steep incline, about the steepest incline I can take it stock, especially with the steps here on the side. Uh, you guys can see here that it got very, very close to scraping the, the steps here. Um, so that was about as much as I can push this vehicle without it getting too crazy. But you can also see it was a pretty steep incline that I took it on. The other thing I do want to mention is the fact that this rides extremely well it's so comfortable um, it can fit tons of people so I took a trip uh, actually just got back today on that trip with my friends we all went to San Antonio with our wives and you're talking like five fully grown men fitting in this thing with space to spare we could probably fit two other guys in here and would have been fine uh, that's how much room there was in here it's pretty insane and I think last is the turning radius so right now I'm on this interesting little curvy area and I could probably do a single turn we'll see if this can do it <laughs> and this is a giant SUV and as a matter of fact that turning radius is so good there are not even cars I've driven that can make that turn I'm not even kidding this has the best turning radius one of the best turning radiuses of any vehicles I've driven period not it's good for this size of an SUV it's just good period and I was absolutely not expecting that in this vehicle and I'm gonna do it one more time here there's no one behind me there's no one coming there's no one straight and just full u-turn and it's pretty impressive so those are very good things about this vehicle really uh, now once we get to the bad things the number one worst thing about this vehicle is fuel this thing just chugs fuel like it's never going to be able to fuel up again. It's absolutely crazy. And to put into perspective for you guys, the best fuel economy I got was I think 18, maybe 18.8, .8, uh, which is good. It's better than what it says on the window sticker. It's still not good by today's standards at all. Um, the other thing is on a full tank, this gets right at around 280 to 300 miles is the fluctuation of what I've gotten. I've actually had to fill this up twice um, just because we took it to San Antonio and then I had it for six days prior to that. 
but as a big SUV, it does that really well. Um, aside from me having the visor up, visibility is fantastic out of the windshield. Um, mirrors are huge, and you can see plenty out of these mirrors. You also have blind spot, which is great. It has adaptive cruise, works really well. Uh, it doesn't have Apple CarPlay, wish it had it, but once your Bluetooth is hooked up, once your phone's plugged in, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, it's just really hard to navigate, but thankfully one of my friends bought a little stand to put right here that my phone would clip on. Uh, so really wish it was easier to navigate when it comes to that sort of thing because the screen here as you guys can probably see right now it's very glared out from the sun and you can't show navigation on this at all so uh, that is something I really want Toyota to update um, even before they do a full update on this car I think they need to update that ASAP to be honest uh, visibility out the back is great I didn't mention this earlier but you do have a little mirror here to see your uh, passengers there in the back make sure they're not fighting you can adjust it just like that and yeah, visibility is fantastic, drives great. And to be honest, there's not really much else to talk about with the Sequoia. I mean, it's a great big vehicle that doesn't get good fuel economy, but it can fit everyone comfortably. Uh, you'll have the peace of mind knowing that it will get you where you need to go without any problems, at least 75 to 90% of the time. And that's pretty much it. It can take you to nice camping spots if they don't have if they don't require tons of ground clearance. Um, if you need to go through a deep puddle or two, not an issue, especially if you're in bad weather. I can imagine this would do fantastic in the rain. And that's pretty much all there is to it, guys. That is the Toyota Sequoia TRD Sport. It just takes that, uh, that sportiness, that looks, the off-road nature, just a little bit further than a standard Sequoia. And then once we get the Toyota Sequoia TRD Pro, I'm very interested to see what all Toyota threw at that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this full in-depth detailed review. I hope it was helpful. If you did, be sure to leave a like. Also be sure to subscribe if you like these reviews. If you wanna see more, I'd love to have you guys join uh, my channel and I'll see you next review. Y'all take care guys, bye.